What's up everyone? Today I will show you how to replace the head gasket on a 96 Toyota Camry with a four cylinder engine. This car overheated on the highway and I suspect it needs a new head gasket. First let's check for the symptoms. A blown head gasket can cause the engine to overheat. You can get exhaust gas bubbles in the coolant or white smoke in the exhaust. Start by removing the right front wheel and the plastic cover to access the harmonic balancer. Disconnect the battery. Remove the alternator, start by disconnecting the wiring. Loosen the tensioner. And remove the alternator belt. Now we can pull the alternator out of the car. Let's take the torque strut off the right side of the engine. Use a 14 millimeter wrench to remove the brace from the right side of the engine. You can interlock two wrenches to put a little bit more torque on it. Loosen the upper bolt for the power steering pump. And remove the power steering belt. Next up, let's use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the upper timing cover. Use a 19 millimeter socket to turn the crankshaft. Stop when you reach the zero degree timing mark. Use a mirror to look at the camshaft pulley. The hole should line up with the line at top dead center. Use the impact wrench to remove the harmonic balancer bolt and pull the balancer off the car. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the lower timing cover. Use a 14 millimeter socket to loosen up the timing belt tensioner. Gently pull the belt off the car and also remove the timing belt tensioner. Drain the coolant from the engine. You can use the petcock on the radiator and a pan underneath. Okay, this next part, you kind of just unscrew everything that's attached to the head. I start with the intake, take off the throttle cable, taking off some of the hoses from the valve cover, as well as the spark plug wires and distributor cap. The valve cover comes off with a 30 millimeter socket. It's the same one as the axle shafts. And I use an impact wrench to unscrew the exhaust heat shield an exhaust manifold. There are a couple of braces on the exhaust manifold. There's one on the right side and one on the left. Each one has two bolts holding it on. And let's take that exhaust manifold off the car. Let's take off the upper radiator hose and the coolant pipe that goes under the head. It's bolted to the head, so it needs to come off. And just go through and take off all the vacuum hoses and wiring from the engine. Remove the intake manifold bolts and pull the intake from the vehicle. The camshafts are covering up the head bolts, so they will need to come out. Let's start by taking off the distributor. Notice it's pointing down. I'm going to mark the camshaft gears to make sure we put them back in correctly. You can use a paint marker. I'm doing something a little more permanent. I'm going to loosen each camshaft cap a little bit at a time. We don't want to bend the camshaft, so we want to do this as gently as possible. So loosen the caps in steps, and then pull the camshafts out. And arrange the camshafts and caps to make sure each one goes back in the same place. 12 millimeter 12 point socket for the head bolts. Also loosen these in steps. Take the head bolts out and you can pull the head off the car. Let's check out the engine block. Kind of dirty. Uh, might need to clean that up a bit. Head gasket definitely looks old. 
The cylinder head also looks old. There's a lot of carbon on the valves. I'm going to clean the engine block with a wire wheel. This is okay because it's cast iron. And this actually looks really good. The head does not look quite so good. There's a lot of pitting where the water went through. I should take this to a machine shop. Took some measurements at the machine shop and found out that head is warped. Uh, so it really can't be used. I ordered a new one. So here I got the new cylinder head. Just make sure you compare it very thoroughly. Um, there's two different versions of California emissions is different from the standard one. Make sure all sides match up so you can use the part. Here I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the camshaft because I'm going to turn these camshafts. Put the pulley on. And I'm turning the intake camshaft to where all the valves are closed, reducing the pressure on the camshaft. This is so I can take the camshaft out without damaging it. Remember the head bolts are hidden under the camshaft. Loosen the caps a little bit at a time. Notice this one came with the timing gears marked. That's great. And carefully take all the camshaft caps off and keep track of their positions. I'm also going to turn the exhaust camshaft a little bit to even out the pressure on the lobes. Same thing, just loosen the caps a little bit at a time and pull that exhaust camshaft out. Let's get all that extra oil off of here. Can't have any oil on that head gasket. With everything very clean, put the head gasket on the engine. Make sure you do not use any kind of sealer. Place the head on the block. Lube every bolt with oil and install the bolts into place. This is taken from the engine service manual here. Torque each bolt to 36 foot-pounds. Next, we're going to turn each head bolt 90 degrees. Tighten them in the order specified by the manual. Go back to that part of the video if you need to. The camshafts also require a special installation procedure. Basically, we want to turn the camshaft so they're not opening the valves during installation. We're going to rotate the intake camshaft until it sits in its lowest point. That means there will be the least amount of pressure when we install the caps. I'm going to do just a little bit of silicone on that camshaft seal and put that in place. Next goes the camshaft cap. I also like to put a little bit of silicone on the sealing surfaces. Next up, you want to sequentially tighten all the camshaft caps, first a little bit at a time, and then torque them down. The torque specification is 14 foot-pounds. Next up, we need to install the exhaust camshaft. I'm going to start by rotating the intake camshaft 45 degrees. Install the exhaust camshaft. Use the marks on the gears to make sure they mesh correctly. And here I will turn the intake camshaft until the exhaust camshaft sits as low as possible in its journals. And there we go, that's that spot. Now I can install the caps and remember to also torque these to 14 foot pounds of torque. Verify the gears mesh by re rotating one revolution. I'm going to do the intake gasket. A little bit of silicone is what I like to do. That way it'll stay in place. Install the intake manifold. There are several bolts on top and two bolts that you can install from underneath the car. Install the fuel injectors and the fuel rail. That will take two bolts. Install the vacuum hose and pipe behind the intake manifold. This one's a little tricky. There's three bolts in the back. Two of the lines go into the power steering pump. Connect the other vacuum hoses. 
and feed the wiring harness back into its proper position. Plug in the knock sensor on the back side of the block and connect the map sensor. There's also a vacuum hose here. The intake manifold support goes all the way to the bottom of the block by the oil pan. Don't forget this part. Use silicone sealer on the camshaft end caps. And I also like to do a little silicone in the corners or you can just put it everywhere like I do. Install the valve cover. And go ahead and install the wiring. The wiring harness goes under the coolant pipes. Install the EGR valve on the back of the intake. Install the fuel line. The pressure hose connects to the fuel filter. And the return line is a little harder to see. It goes to the fuel rail. Install the throttle body. There are four bolts that will hold it on. Connect the vacuum hoses and electrical components. Take the coolant hose from the water outlet and hook it to the front port under the throttle body. And take this hose that's a little bit lower and connect that to the one in the back. The middle port goes to what's called the bypass. And here's a vacuum hose diagram. Install the EGR vacuum valve. Port P goes to the middle port on the throttle body. R goes to the one that's right next to it. Don't use the vacuum harness. It's hard to use. It's kind of in the back. It's really bad. Mount the vacuum switching valve in an easy to reach location. And the hoses will actually be shorter. You can run them to the correct places. The connector will still reach the harness and you can move the engine grounds to an easy to reach location. Double check your vacuum connections. You can pause this video and compare it to your car. Hose number three will go down to the top part of this coolant switch and then the lower hose, number four, will go down to the evaporative emissions canister. Next install the timing cover backing plate and the camshaft pulley. Install the timing belt tensioner and fill the engine with oil, four and a half quarts. Next, we're going to prime the oil pump. Turn it using a drill until the drill slows down. Then you know you have oil pressure in the engine. Install the lower timing cover and the harmonic balancer. Turn the balancer until you reach the zero degree position. Pull the balancer back off, as well as the lower timing cover. Next, line up the timing mark with the hole in the camshaft pulley to make sure that the camshaft is at top dead center. Install the timing belt. Once the belt is in place, install that lower timing cover and the balancer and turn it to complete revolutions. Stop at the zero degree mark and double check the camshaft position. It looks like I'm off by one tooth. Here we're going to move the tensioner down and lock it in the loose position. And this will allow me to scoot that camshaft pulley forward one tooth. Let's put tension back on that belt. Turn the crank two revolutions again. Check for zero degrees at the crank and use the mirror to make sure that the camshaft pulley is lined up. Looks like I got it this time. Okay, the hard part is done. Now we're just putting stuff together. Install that timing cover and the distributor. Remember the rotor is facing down when it came out. Let's install that exhaust manifold. There's some nuts up above. And the exhaust manifold will have two braces holding it on, one on the right side and another one on the left. Remember to install the three nuts holding the exhaust pipe on. Install the exhaust heat shield. Connect the throttle cable. And install the upper radiator hose. We're going to put that intake bag in. 
Make sure you hook up all the little vacuum hoses going to it. Connect that coil. Install the power steering belt. Use a pry bar to put tension on the belt. And then tighten the lower bolt. And don't forget about that upper power steering bolt. We're going to install that engine mount. Remember to use 14 millimeter wrenches. You can combine wrenches to increase torque. And then put that torque strut in. Next up is the alternator. Let's get that back in place. My car is ghetto and it's missing the tensioner, so I have to use a pry bar. Someday I'll go get one of these parts. I don't know where it went. Connect the wiring to the alternator. And fill the radiator with 50% antifreeze, 50% water, or you can get a pre-diluted mix from the store. Connect the battery. And start the engine. Reinstall the plastic cover and the front wheel. Take the car off the jack and tighten each lug nut to 80 foot pounds of torque. Now I'm ready for a test drive. Okay, it looks like I've fixed my car, and you can do it too.